Hello everyone, my name is Prot Dasilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about keyboard macros in Emacs. Uh, keyboard macros are basically a recording of key sequences that you can store and then invoke at a later point in order to repeat the action or the series of actions uh, that you had recorded. And this allows you uh, in practice to manipulate text very fast, especially when you have identified uh, certain patterns that you can repeat the, uh, the behavior that you have. Let's switch to Emacs here and the first thing I want to do is activate screen key. So from now on every key press that I will be inputting will appear on the bottom part of the screen. Uh, okay, now so the way you record the macro is either by pressing F3 or Control X and the left parenthesis. And you complete the recording of a macro by pressing F4 or Control X and the right parenthesis. For the purpose of this demo, I will be using the key chords that involve the parentheses, uh, but uh, where appropriate, you can uh, replace these with F3 or F4, so in more uh, complex uh, key chords that, that uh, end with those uh, key sequences. So you will see it in practice. Let's start by recording a macro, Control X and the left parenthesis. Uh, this macro I want to record, I want to make sure that my point is at the beginning of the line and then I just want uh, to type something. This is a test. This is all I want to do with this macro and now I want to complete this. Let's move to the new line and let's execute the macro, Control X and the letter E. So this did exactly what I wanted and it is telling me in the mini buffer type E to repeat macro. So let me just do that. Okay, I see that it, re it repeated the action. However, I have identified something that I do not like and uh, wish that was done differently. Specifically, I want the line when I execute the macro again to go below the current line rather than uh, be appended to it uh, this way. So I will delete that. And there are two ways of appending uh, uh, keys, uh, key sequences to a macro. Either you can rerun the macro and then append stuff to it, or if you know exactly what you are doing, you can just append things directly. Let's come here and let's first do it uh, by running the macro and then appending stuff to it. The way you do that is by prefixing the command that uh, records the macro with uh, control U. So control U and control X and the left parenthesis. Or if you use F3, control U and then F3. And we see below that it is telling us appending to keyboard macro. We also see that it has already executed the macro that we recorded earlier. And the only thing I want to do now for the purpose of this demo is just hit the return key. So make sure that when you perform the macro, also add a new line and I want to complete the recording of this macro. Let's run the macro now and see what happens. Okay, this is the desired behavior. Let's uh, type E again to see, to make sure. Very well, great. Now let's come, let's come a few lines below and uh, do the same thing. So let's uh, record the macro again and let's record the same macro. This is a test. And uh, let's not input the return key. Let's leave it where it is. And we have defined the macro, the same we defined the very first macro with the undesired behavior of not moving to the new line. And we have noticed this error here or this uh, incomplete sequence. And we want to append stuff to it without executing it again. So you do this similar to the previous uh, action, but this time you prefix uh, uh, control U twice. So you press Control U, Control U, and then the command that records the macro. And we see now that it is telling us right away appending to keyboard macro. And we also see that it has not record that it has not executed anything here. So again, I am appending the same command, and I am closing this macro. Let's run this again. Perfect. Exactly what we were looking for. That's great. Let's close this. Let's move further down. No, actually, let's remove these keys. Let's now move on to some of the more uh, advanced uh, commands that you can perform uh, when using uh, keyboard macros. 
I consider these advanced uh, for the mere uh, reason that they involve a different uh, key chord uh, chain, a different sequence of uh, key presses and uh, this uh, sequence is common for all these commands so I think they are um, they could be grouped together as the more advanced or uh, power user uh, use cases of keyboard uh, macros. Uh, let's start with the first one. Let's first uh, create uh, some lines by executing the last keyboard macro that we had here and let's uh, move up a line and let's start recording a new macro. Uh, we just want to remove this exclamation mark and replace it with a full stop and uh, add some text. Uh, please take notes. Okay and we want to uh, conclude the recording of this macro and now we want to start uh, uh, no we want to execute this macro on the entirety of the selected text here so on all the lines uh, within the blue area the way you do that is you uh, execute control x control k and then the letter r control x control k is the common pattern that uh, groups all these um, actions that I will be demoing at this uh, part. So control X, control K and the letter R. And this repeats uh, the uh, key chord, so this repeats the macro on the entirety of the region. That looks great uh, and uh, very efficient uh, given the circumstances. However, <laughs> the key, the operating term here is given the circumstances because in my experience and granted this is a very short uh, uh, experience a very small sample uh, given that i have not been using emacs not even for a, a whole month uh, but we, in my experience this specific way of using keyboard macros has never come in uh, handy i have never needed this specific way of doing things if i need to operate on many things at once I will either, either use a, a regular expression to uh, manipulate things or if it's a small region like this one uh, maybe I can use, uh, sorry, if it's a small region like this one maybe I can input a few uh, multiple cursors. I am using the multiple cursors package and then uh, please write and then I can just uh, add the text uh, this way. By the way, I find it difficult to speak and type at the same time. I'm always making these uh, typing errors, but no worries, no problem, no stress. Uh, so yeah, in practice, I have never found the need for uh, using a macro on, the, uh, on uh, the whole region. However, I am purposefully trying uh, to implement it in my workflow, incorporate it in my work, uh, so that I embed it in my memory and uh, I know about it in case I stumble upon uh, an unforeseen uh, circumstance where this specific method would indeed be the best uh, approach to solve the problem. So it's good to know about it even if you will never have any use for it. That's how I try to learn uh, things and how I am approaching uh, my Emacs uh, journey one step at a time. Very well, let's move now to a bit further below and uh, let's move on to the next command that again involves uh, the control X, control K uh, sequence, the control X, control K prefix. Say now that I want to execute a macro, but I don't want to execute the very last macro that I defined. I don't want that. I want the previous one, which is the one that inserts the text. This is a test. That's the one I want to insert. So the way I the way I want to do the way I want to do is cycle the keyboard macro ring. In Emacs we have a ring uh, for uh, macros, just as we have a ring for uh, things that we kill and then we can later yank. So copy and paste. So the way you cycle the ring is by pressing Control X, Control K, and then the standard motion keys for next or previous. So Control N or Control P. Uh, this might sound uh, very complex, but because you are always holding down uh, the control key, it's fairly easy. Think about it, holding down the control key and then pressing X, K, N or P. Control X, control K, control N. 
and I see below in the mini buffer that it is it has cycled to the previous uh, macro. Let me execute this just to make sure. I'm executing it and again I can see that this is the macro. Let's now select this region and let's again cycle the ring. Now this time we press Ctrl X, Ctrl K and Ctrl P to uh, move to the other item in the ring and we see that it has changed the macro and let's now operate on the region because we have selected the region Ctrl X, Ctrl K and the letter R and we see that it has recorded the macro uh, that we had selected and this is great just to notice uh, just to note that how um, that you can cycle the um, the keyboard macro without always pressing Ctrl X, Ctrl K, and then Ctrl N or Ctrl P. Once you press Ctrl X and Ctrl K and then N, Ctrl N or uh, or P, uh, you can see that the mini buffer uh, a message here persists. So if you press Ctrl N or Ctrl P, you are cycling uh, the ring uh, that way. So you don't have to prefix the whole thing so just control n control p and you are good to go and then you execute the macro and you are good to go let's record the third macro uh, just to uh, make this uh, crystal clear this is yet another keyboard macro hello there and we complete the recording of this macro. Let's go to the next line and execute it. We see that this is what we want. Again, we missed the return key, but let's leave that as it is for now. Now let's come here and let's uh, cycle the ring and find the first one. Okay, that's it. Let's execute that. Okay, it works. Let's select the region and let's again cycle the ring. We found the one we want, Control N, Control K, and then the letter R, Control X, Control K, and the letter R. We did that. Okay, you get the point. There is no need for me to um, uh, repeat this. Uh, you can, there is a ring that you can cycle, and then you can find the macro that you need, and you do, this, uh, you do things uh, this way. Very good. Let's move on with some more examples. Let's uh, clear the screen. What I want to show you now is how we can uh, store and reuse our macros either at a later point in the current session or at a future session. But before I do that, I want to start recording um, a more realistic example of a useful macro because what I have been uh, recording thus far is uh, standard uh, strings of uh, text which in practice wouldn't really be that much of use. So let's start uh, recording a macro and let's uh, say that we want to uh, record, let's say we want to have a begin source emacs lisp. This is the specific thing that I am typing now is uh, something that you find in org mode. You can input uh, the tags begin source and the end source with a specific uh, a key chord chain within org mode but uh, that's outside the scope of the demo here. I am still recording the macro now. What I want to do is uh, write this thing, then uh, move to the beginning of the line, create a new line, come back up here, and then some more actions. Let's call it like this. And I want to conclude the macro here. So if I go further below and I execute the macro, you see, this can help me in practice speed up the process of uh, inserting all this um, uh, boilerplate, all this uh, structured uh, text that I need to add in order to embed some Emacs Lisp inside of uh, an org mode file. And now let's, uh, let's recall uh, one of the things we learned early, earlier, which is to append uh, something to the definition of the last available macro. As we said, we, wa we don't want to rerun the macro, so we press Control u twice and then run the macro. So to append stuff to this, and let's say we want to append some uh, Lisp code, some boilerplate here, some more st 
stuff here and let's say we want to conclude the macro here. So in practice what I want to do is the next time I want to run the macro, I want to be here so that I can give a name to my function uh, and then proceed to define it. Uh, so you can see now in practice uh, how powerful uh, macros can be. And uh, now I want to show you how we can uh, store and reuse the macros uh, now that we have something more realistic to work with. Um, let's move on to how you would do this. It's um, you have to first assign a name uh, to the keyboard macro and you do that by invoking uh, the common prefix that we know uh, from now. It's control X, control K and then the letter N. So control X, control K and the letter N. The mini buffer prompt pops up and it is asking us uh, for a name uh, to give to this macro that we have here. Let's call it uh, demo for the purposes of this demo. Uh, all caps. And we input that. And now let's come back here and let's uh, define another macro, which will be one of the standard ones. This is a test. Just this. In order to make sure that if we execute the macro, we are executing the last macro that we defined. Now imagine that you have like 20 macros in the ring and you don't want to cycle through the keyboard macro ring in order to find the thing that you are looking for. You want to call it by its name and execute it directly. So you do that by pressing MX and then you type the name that you have given to your macro. And there it is, just like any other uh, function inside of Emacs. And we confirm our choice. And here is exactly the macro that we have defined earlier. Okay, you can clearly understand now how powerful this is because you can define macros that uh, repeat uh, common tasks, repetitive tasks, and then you can call them by their name that you have assigned to them. And uh, you can uh, greatly improve your productivity that way. You can speed up your uh, editing, your writing process. And uh, finally, uh, say that you want to store this for future sessions as well. You have written a macro that is abstract enough and uh, that can be ported to other contexts that can be useful in a variety of uh, writing environments. And you want to reuse it in future sessions, not just uh, uh, in the current, uh, in the running session. The way you would do that is you would uh, press MX and then you would have to insert keyboard macro. So insert keyboard macro because I am using the package SMEX, uh, S-M-E-X. It is uh, providing me the IDO mode, I-D-O mode uh, in MX and that's why I can use a fuzzy search uh, to match exactly what I am looking for. So what I'm looking for is insert uh, dash KBD dash macro and I insert that, I confirm that and it is asking me uh, to insert uh, the keyboard macro with the given name and because I know the name of the macro I am telling it to insert that. And what this will do is it will print the definition of the macro called demo in a pure Lisp, in proper Lisp uh, code. We do just that and we see that it has, uh, it has printed the definition of the macro that does uh, this specific thing here and puts the point in that position. Um, I, I, I'm not, uh, as I have said, I am still new to Emacs so I cannot really decipher this. I'm not sure exactly what these uh, um, numbers here stand, stand for. I assume it has to do with uh, ASCII symbols or something like that. But I can, I can tell, I'm, I know that this is exactly what we want. And then, of course, you can take this, store it in a file in your init file or somewhere else, load that file, and then reuse the macro that you have defined. And of course, you can imagine you can have, you can maintain a separate file with all your uh, keyboard macro definitions and reuse them uh, across your projects in any kind of uh, situation, wherever you need. And if you are very good with writing macros, this is a, a huge productivity boost. I can imagine you can use this 
and uh, replace any kind of reliance on external packages such as the multiple cursors that I showed uh, earlier in the demo or perhaps even uh, some uh, common cases of uh, uh, search and replace using regular expressions and stuff like that. Uh, you are only limited by how good you are, by your skills, I guess. Uh, Emacs offers you all the power you need. And I believe that covers it. Um, what I have uh, documented here is uh, that is not uh, exhaustive. There is still more to learn. For example, I was reading the manual earlier and there are ways to edit the macros. You can also edit them step by step and things like that. But because I am still new, I have not really put these to the test. I have not really worked with these to familiarize myself uh, with how I would go about doing things and whether it would indeed be useful to approach things that way. But so I recommend that uh, you check the official manual uh, from beginning to end when it comes to keyboard macros and of course to everything else. The manual is comprehensive and should uh, provide in, uh, answers uh, to at least uh, most of your questions. Thank you very much for your attention, folks. Just to close with a, a short notice regarding the audio quality of my videos, um, a couple of uh, viewers uh, informed me that um, the audio was not particularly good. It was um, too high. Um, and I am aware of this issue. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Uh, what I have done now to remedy the problem is to... Um, decrease the volume of my input device, of my microphone. Uh, however, this is the built-in microphone of my laptop. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad X220. And uh, as such, it is not uh, particularly great. So whatever I do, I can never circumvent uh, the limitations of my hardware. Uh, hopefully in the future, in the near future, I will be able to upgrade my hardware and therefore be in a position to deliver uh, higher quality audio and uh, uh, improve uh, things that way. Anyhow, thank you very much for your attention and your patience. Uh, goodbye for now, folks.